back in the studio. Our legal counsel this morning, 436-1212. If you have a question, want some advice, give us a call and get on the line now. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. Okay, we were talking during the break about office Christmas parties, company Christmas parties. They probably start this weekend if they haven't started already. And it's important to keep in mind, obviously you want to behave yourself when you go to the office Christmas party, but what are some important things to legally? I mean, can an office uh, be held responsible if, if someone goes out and they're drinking and driving? And vice versa, if you're an employee who's maybe not behaving as well as they should be at the party. Well, to answer the first, the second question first, obviously, if you go to a party and you get out of control and you insult your boss's wife or, or, or vice versa somehow, uh, you're probably going to get your, your job in jeopardy. I mean, whenever you go to something like that, you've got to act appropriately. And, and I suppose the words that I say over and over are good judgment. People need to use good judgment in what they do. Secondly, I think the law is still right now, if you have a party and people get drunk, I don't think you're responsible for them driving. Uh, that, that's still the law. However, I, I think that's always subject to change and always subject to somebody doing something about it. So anybody hosting a party or any, any employer having a party, you got to try to really be careful of people that want to leave and, and have had too much to drink. See if you can get a, a, provide them a, a ride or get them a cab or have somebody that hasn't been drinking get them home. I, I think that's good judgment for all of us, even for the employers or the people hosting the party. I mean, I mean the bottom line is everybody should use good judgment. If someone has too, too much alcohol to drink, People should take care of them. We don't want people getting arrested. We don't pe want people getting having accidents. We don't want people insulting other people or getting loud and out of control at a party. Everybody should use good judgment. Right, because you never know what could lead up to possibly getting in trouble at work because of your behavior at the party. It doesn't mean, you know, throw caution to the wind just because it's a party. It's still uh, a work function, right? Well, yeah, and I, I mean, it, still, I mean, I think your employer, depending on your job, some jobs you'll have a contract, and, and with a contract you can... I mean, that controls whether they can fire you or not. Some jobs are at will. They can fire you for whatever reason they think is sufficient. And obviously, if you get completely out of control at a party, that might be a reason to do that. Okay. Well, okay. keep that in mind to be safe and have fun this <laughs> yeah. weekend. I think this uh, question actually goes into our next caller. Uh, segues pretty nicely. I think he has a question about DUI. Good morning. What's your question for Charlie today? Uh, hello. Hi there. What's your question? Um, my name is Barb. Yeah. Okay, it's a different uh, question. Go right ahead. Um, yeah, mine's probably different with the other thing. Um, I have a son that's 15, and he's, like, in a facility type of place, like a group home. And I was wondering, how would I pursue on just having him stay in a facility? How would I go about doing that, e either where he's at or somewhere else? Well, I, I'm not exactly sure what she's talking about. I think she's referring to the juvenile court system. We obviously have a different court system for adults than we do for people that are under 18 years of age. Sometimes when you get in trouble and you're under 18 years of age, they put you in what they call a group home, which is not actually being incarcerated somewhere, but in a home. And they can do that for a number of reasons. The parents can't control you or you've committed crimes or something like that. If you're in a group home, they try to get you there until you should be either released to your parents or obviously you get old enough you can go out on your own. Those are done to help people, and that's what they're for. I don't really know why you would want to get someone out of there unless you thought they were ready to get out. If you thought they were ready to get out, you probably need to go see the judge, get an attorney, and, and go see the judge in juvenile court and see what you can get done. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Charlie, and good luck with that. We appreciate your call. We have time now for one more call this morning. Hi there. What's your question? Uh, my question is, if you were pulled over on a, uh, a traffic stop and the presence of alcohol was smelled, you were given a, uh, a sobriety test in the field, failed that but taken to the police station and then blew a point zero seven two how can you still be uh, charged for a DUI well uh, it, if you're driving drunk you can you can be <clears throat> that test is for alcohol you, you can also be under the influence of drugs you can be under the most people don't realize this but if you take prescription drugs and it influences you and your coordination and you shouldn't be driving then you can be uh, pulled for uh, driving under the influence and that's what it is. It's not driving while drinking alcohol or having alcohol. It's driving under the influence. So, quite frankly, people can pass those tests. They can take a blood test and find uh, drugs in your system, and you're still guilty of a DUI. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Thanks mm -hmm. for calling in. Good luck with that. We appreciate you coming in, as sure. always. And we'll be back with more Eyewitness News here on the Kansas CW in just a few minutes.
and expect more. From KSEW, this is Eyewitness News This Morning in high definition. Online at kwch.com.